So forces lecture number two. Now in this particular presentation, there will not be a lot of new vocabulary or terminology or notes to take. This is a, a time for me to explain and reinforce the applications of what we now know about forces and what we're gonna do with them. So first of all, let's review a, bit, a little bit. We know that a force is a push or a pull. We know that that has to be a vector because in order to push or pull on something, you have to push or pull in a certain direction. We understand that the units to measure force are Newtons and tied to that is the fact that when we measure the mass of something to calculate its weight, it must be in kilograms. Now forces, they can be an X and Y. I can push this way or I can push this way or I can actually push this way. Forces are vectors and they can be applied in a direction that is either X or Y or both at the same time. The point of today's presentation is to talk about free to body diagrams and how we draw them because these are very helpful in showing all of the forces that are acting on an object. If we look at all of the forces acting on an object, we can get into this situation here called equilibrium. And that is where all of the forces are what we said to be balanced and the motion is not changing. Something like this wood block right here, there are forces acting on it. There's a force pulling down because of its weight. The table pushes back with a normal force. There are forces present, but the motion of the block is not changing. This is a state that we call equilibrium or where all of the forces are balanced. I could push on the block this way. Now I've introduced an applied force this direction. The block still isn't moving, it's still in equilibrium. Well, that means there must be a force pushing this way acting against my pushing this direction. That particular force in this case would be a force of friction. This is why when I apply a force, it doesn't move this direction because the frictional force is working against me. We would wanna draw a free body diagram that shows us if an object is in equilibrium or not. And to do that, we need to show all of the forces to figure out which one is more or less because that's gonna predict which way the object is then going to move because if you have more push or pull in one direction than the other, it's going to change its motion that direction. So consider our block right here. When I was pushing on it and it wasn't moving. First of all, we have a weight force that always acts down. And remember that weight is mass times gravity. Well, it wasn't falling into the table. That means the table must have been pushing back with a force that we call the normal force. Notice how I drew these two arrows. I drew them about the same size. Now we don't need to get out a ruler and measure this, but because the block is not moving this way, it means that in this direction, the forces must be balanced. So my normal force is equal to my weight force. Now there could be a chance, there could be a situation where the weight overcomes the normal force. If I stacked an elephant on top of a table, well the weight would be so much bigger than the normal force the table can supply that it could then change its motion. The elephant could fall this way into the table. But in most cases, the normal force and the weight are gonna be opposite and equal. Well, remember, I was pushing on it this way. I can usually draw the arrow like that in this direction. Even though I was pushing from this side, the effect is that we have a force that is going this way. Typically, we call that FA, or it is an applied force. It is somebody or something that applies a force in a certain direction, whether it's me pushing, or the engine of a rocket or a car, we have an applied force. Well, my block did not move, meaning there had to be an equal and opposite force because the motion didn't change. That force there was a frictional force. Notice that a lot of these forces have subscripts that will tell us what each force is. An applied force, the normal force, the frictional force, the one that doesn't is usually the weight because the weight is the weight. Let me talk about this idea that motion is not changing. In this case with our block, it was sitting still. The motion was not changing. However, 
something can be moving and be in equilibrium. It just means that its motion is not changing. For example, if I push this at a constant velocity, it is not changing its motion. It's not accelerating. And all the forces are still balanced. The best example I can give this, uh, I can show this to you with, is the idea of terminal velocity. We cover this with free fall. We know we have a weight that will accelerate an object down as it's freely falling. And with air resistance, we know we can get to a point where there's so much air in front of the object as it's falling so fast that the air pushes back and the object stops accelerating. That is that terminal or maximum velocity. Well, I would draw something like this. That's my force of my air resistance. So this is a skydiver, say it's falling, and he gets to a point where he doesn't speed up anymore because the force pulling him down, his weight is equal to the force that air is pushing back. Now, it doesn't mean he stops in midair. It just means that the motion is no longer changing. We are not accelerating anymore. Now let's consider this situation here. We've got our wood block, it's sitting on the table. There's a weight force going down and a normal force that is working against it. And I'm gonna apply a force. And this time I'm going, I'm going to apply a force through a rope or a chain. I'm not actually gonna to even touch the block. This is called a tension force. So if I pull on the block this way, we can see it doesn't move. It's still in equilibrium. My tension is being resisted by a frictional force going this way. But here's where this gets a little different. The world is not nice, pretty, right angles. We've drawn a force this way, a force this way, this way, and this way. Nice 90 degrees to one another. And the real world isn't like that. If I pull on the block like this, I want you to think about my tension force. Here it was all in X and I was only applying a force to the block through this rope this way. If I were to do this, I'm applying a force only this direction. But if I apply a force this way, if I pull on the rope this direction, some of my force is this way and some of my force is that way. Well, because a force is a vector, remember all vectors can have an X and a Y component and we can break a force vector into its x part and its y part just like we did with a velocity with a projectile it was moving up and forward at the same time and we can figure out well how much of it is up and forward that right there is pulling a lot more forward than up this right here is pulling a lot more up than it is forward and what determines how much of my force is forward or up is the angle at which it is applied. So that's what we're getting into here is how do we figure out or how do we calculate the amount of force that is forward versus up, X versus Y. So let's consider two situations. Let's look at it flat first and we'll say the weight is, oh, let's go 100 Newtons. If it's horizontal, well, the normal force must also be 100 Newtons because the block is not moving into the table or coming off the table. Well, let's say my rope is applying a force this way. Well, that is a tension force. And we'll just make up a number. Let's say it is 50. Well, the block's not moving, so there must be a force going this way that is equal and opposite to this force, and that is a frictional force, and then it must also be 50 Newtons. The block is in equilibrium. But now let's consider that same block and we pull on it instead of horizontally like we did here. Let's say my tension force now is 50 Newtons that way. And if we know the angle, we can then determine how much of my force is pulling up versus this way. So We'll keep this easy. We'll make this a 45 degree angle because then my X and my Y are the same. 
and I don't only have to do my math one time. Well, what was the same from up here? It's still the same box. It still has the same weight. The weight is 100 newtons. But let's see if some of these other forces change. We need to get a tension force in the Y and a tension force in the X. My 50 is being pulled along the string, which is now at an angle. I need to do a little bit of Sakatoa math in order to figure out what the X and the Y component are. So setting up my Sakatoa relationship, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 50. So I can find the Y component using the sine function, and when I do the math, I get that the Y is 35 newtons. Well, the X is also going to be 35 newtons because it's a 45 degree angle. So looking at this now, here's what we have. We have a force this way, a tension force, in the x direction of 35. Well, the block still isn't moving this way, so now the friction going this way is now 35. Well, up here the friction was 50. Now it's 35, because up here the friction was working against my tension of 50. Now it's only working against my force of 35. So my force has changed. What about this normal force? Well, before the normal force was counteracting the weight all by itself. So if the weight was 100, the normal force also had to be 100. But now, because I'm pulling that angle, I am supporting some of the weight. Think about I am pulling up with a tensional force in the y direction of 35 newtons. So I am lifting some of this weight. I'm lifting 35 newtons of it. Well, the box still isn't moving. It's still in equilibrium. I'm only lifting up 35 newtons of the 100 newton weight. What's supporting the rest of the weight is the normal force. Well, how much is the normal force now? The normal force is now 65. Whereas up here, the normal force and the weight were the same to make it an equilibrium. Here, I still have 100 newtons of weight, but now I've got that weight being balanced out by 35 newtons of force that I gave, and 65 newtons must be supplied by the table. Let's look at the next situation where angles come into play, and that is ramps, because the world is not flat. The world has inclines to it. There are angles involved. Well, if we consider this block on this ramp, right now it is in equilibrium. It is not moving and its motion is not changing. This block still has a weight force going down. The ramp must be pushing back against it because it's not moving this way. Well, that's a normal force. But here's the trick with the normal force. The normal force doesn't work up and down. The normal force, remember, works perpendicular to the surface of contact. So if the surface is horizontal, the normal force pushes straight up against the weight pushing straight down. However, if the surface is at an angle, well, my weight still works down. My normal force works perpendicular to the surface. So it doesn't work exactly opposite the weight. And that makes a big difference. What you think about this situation here? I'm gonna take this out of equilibrium. If I make the ramp steep enough, the motion of the block changes. That's not an equilibrium. There must be a force that is causing its motion to change. Well, it's not the weight, it's not the normal force. There are some other sets of forces here that come into play that are acting on the block that must be changing its motion. And that's what we're going to try to show in a free body diagram here. Now, if I have the ramp like this, the forces, these mystery forces that we can't identify yet, must not have been big enough to cause a change in the motion. However, it seems like if I get the angle of the ramp big enough, now something happens to the forces that they're now big enough to cause a change of motion. 
there is something with this angle that changes the forces present. So let's draw a free body diagram to try to figure out what those mystery forces are. What are these new set of forces? Well, let's start off with the one that we know is still present. Of course, there is always a weight. And the weight always works the same direction. It always works straight down. Well, I know there's a normal force because the ramp is supporting the block and it's not moving this way across the ramp. So the ramp must be pushing the block this way. There is some amount of normal force. I don't know what it is yet, but we're going to figure it out. But what we saw was that the block moved this way down the ramp if this angle was right. So there must be a force pulling the block this way. The question is, what is it? If I just asked you a general question, well, what force is pulling the block down the ramp? You might say, oh, well, it's weight is pulling it down the ramp. And you'd be half right, but you'd also be half wrong. Because if we think about weight, we know which direction weight works. It only works straight down going towards the earth. But it seems like something to do with the weight of this block does pull it down the ramp. We're going to have two new terms here. We're going to have what's called the perpendicular weight and the parallel weight. Still W, but we're going to denote these with a perpendicular sign and a parallel sign. Now, without getting too much in the weeds with the derivation of this, we saw that this angle makes a big difference as to what that force down the ramp here is. And I used to always try to go through the derivation and draw a bunch of little triangles and do the complementary uh, angles and do the Sakatoa. Well, I, we're not really going to do that here. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that this force down the ramp is the parallel weight because it is parallel to the surface of contact. And it is found with this relationship. We know the mg stands for the weight. The sign of this angle, if we do the geometry, we figure out that this vector, this component of the weight that acts down the ramp is found by this relationship here. Well, look at this diagram here. I have a normal force pushing this way and the block isn't moving. There must be a force going opposite that is equal. Well, that is also a component of the weight that is called the perpendicular weight and it is found with this here. Notice it's like we took the weight vector and we broke it into its X and its Y components along the ramp, like we can do with any other vector. So the perpendicular weight is the portion of the weight that pulls perpendicular to the surface and it acts opposite the normal force. The parallel weight is that force that pulls it down the ramp. But I'm also missing something here. There is another force that is going this way. There is also a frictional force that works against the block as it slides down the ramp. You might remember that there was a case where the block was on the ramp, but it wasn't sliding. It was just sitting on the ramp. Well, there was still a parallel weight. There was a component of the weight pulling it down the ramp, but it wasn't moving. And that's because the frictional force was big enough to counteract that. If we got the ramp high enough, though, this force got so big that it overcame the friction and it started to change its motion this direction. So now, using this information, you're going to go to the problem set and you're going to draw the free body diagrams with all of the forces and their values on that diagram.